God bless all of you tonight. Pastor Clem about back was so I wish it later tonight. Pastor President Banks. All of my fellow co colleagues in the gospel ministry who has come from across this nation to share with you this week. Yes, yes. <clears throat> to all of the gospel claimers who are present here, to all of you, my dear brothers and Sisters in the Lord. It's just good to be here. I often say to our congregation, when you start getting as old as I am, it's just good to be anyway. But I am eternally grateful right. to our Heavenly Father for this glorious privilege, right. which is mine to, to come and to share with you in these hours, these days study and worship all right, all right. and fellowship. I'm grateful to have three of my preaching sons travel with me. Pastor Derek Walter, who is assistant pastor now Pastor Crawford. Another one of my dear sons, Pastor Mitchell, yeah. Tabitha Baptist Church on Home City. I appreciate them so very much. Yeah. Sharon, Pastor H.B. Charles Jr., yes, who I claim. <laughs> I'm happy to claim him. <laughs> He's a son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Quite close to his father on his lifetime. Wow. Most certainly thankful. Proud of him. Amen. To our National Congress President of right. Christian Education, Dr. George White. Right. And then to Dr. Joel Gregory. Amen. 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 Brother C. Backus. Amen. I am. Um, very seldom do you get the opportunity to be on the same team Eliza. with a George Watt, a Joel Gregory, Amen. and a H.P. Charles Jr. Amen. And then this backwards boy come home. <laughs> Send for me. <laughs> email, phone call, something. Say that there is an emergency. Let's <laughs> turn, turn home immediately. <laughs> Those of you who are here today know what a powerful. Found message. And I'm grateful to share in this past minister's institute. And I will assure you that that 
that I have already received much more than I'll be able to give. But I thank God again to this committee for giving me the privilege to share it tonight. Now, I'm like that back and I'm, I'm getting old. It takes me a while to get started. And I really don't preach a long time. I just preach as long as it takes. But it needs your prayers. There is a word tonight. That's found in the book of Revelation. Oh Lord. Go ahead. I would that we would notice the eleventh chapter. If you would stand with me. The eleventh chapter and the very first verse. I want to center our thing around the very first verse of that eleventh chapter of Revelation. And there was given me a reed like unto the rock. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. I want to talk tonight from the words of appraisal of the church. Appraisal of the church. I think you would agree with me tonight, Bible students, that the book of Revelation is a strange book. It's, it is the most difficult book in the New Testament. Bridget, Bridget, John. But when a student of the Bible embarks upon the study of the revelation, yes, yeah. he feels himself projected into a new and a different world. All right. But not only is the revelation different, All right, John. Mm -hmm. but it is also difficult for a modern mind to understand. One commentator said that, that the study of the revelation either find a man mad. I leave him mad. Right. Mercy, mercy. And some writers have even questioned his right to a place in the New Testament at all. On the other hand, there are those in every generation who who have loved this book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now the revelation as you know, was written by the Apostle John. And he began the book by saying that it is from John to the seven churches which are in Asia. And he, he speaks of himself as John, the brother, and companion 
in tribulation of those to whom he writes. I, John, he said, saw these things and heard them. John had been placed in exile on the Isle of Patmos. And he was placed there because of his active preaching. Of the word of God. And his testimony. Concerning. Jesus Christ. Uh, now this is such a moving. Story. It's a story where we see. Devotion to Christ. Crowned with suffering. For, for here is a man. Here the man has been abandoned, yeah, yeah. has been shut off well, from society yeah. because of his devotion to Christ. Yeah. 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 Right. It was under these circumstances, yeah. shut off from friends and shut off from human fellowship. Yeah. That John was given this revelation. No men, no men could cut off his human activity. They could not bind the Spirit of God. They couldn't bind the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, John's experiences were like those of the Old Testament patriarchs. Yes, sir. You, you remember Moses mm -hmm. yeah. uh, wrote the Pentateuch in the wilderness. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and David wrote many other psalms yeah. while being pursued by Saul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Isaiah lived in the difficult days and died a martyr's death. And Ezekiel wrote in exile. Uh, well, uh, Jeremiah's life was one of trial and persecution. And Peter wrote his two letters shortly before crucifixion. But thus in the will of God, the final written revelation was given to John while suffering for Christ. And the gospel. Yes, sir. If you remember, Bible students, that things were very dark for John, and not only for John, but as well as the church. Yes, so, uh, for the church was undergoing uh, persecution. Right. Yeah. And so then the occasion uh, of the book is to quicken the faith of the persecuted. Yes, sir. John himself is an old man. Yeah, right. and, and he he stood alone uh, all by himself. The other apostles had been put to death. You want to help me preach? Yeah, right. uh, the progress of the gospel, which was mighty and which was triumphant in Paul's day, seemingly had been brought. And, and there was great discouragement and in the very thick of the battle here comes the book the book it's, it's, to, it's to reawaken faith it's to reawaken hope and love and courage in God's people it's, it's to show them that the clouds will pass away and that truth will yet prevail. So John said, I was in the spirit. On the Lord's day. And although he, he was away from fellow 
pushed him down. Yeah. And he was away from yeah. spiritual yeah. fellowship. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Out of the eye, which his yeah. comrades were well now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yet John said, oh. I was in the spirit. Oh.
the area yes, belong to God in some special way. Yeah. It, 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 it's, an, it, it's, an, it's an evaluation yes. of his property. Yeah. John is instructed to measure not only the temple, not only the altar, but he's instructed also to measure the worship. Do I have a witness here? It's, 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 it's really saying, y'all, tonight, in fact, that, that God himself is the judge of man's worship. He's the judge of man's character. And that all must give an account to him. It also implied in as much as the reed was 15 to 20 feet long, that that, that comes far short of the divine standard. Oh God to me. Even a person very tall would, would fall short of the of the 15 to 20 foot measuring rod. And, and God, God, listen, is therefore not only The shortcoming of worship. Who do not measure up to his standard. My brothers and, and sisters, listen, listen. The, the, the language here, the language here is sort of revolt in, in many church circles and among many people. When you, when you talk about evaluation, when you talk about measurement, when you when you talk about the appraisal yeah. of the church, yeah. because we are reluctant, we are unwilling yeah. to take long, hard, critical looks at the church. Yeah. Oh, you were definitely here tonight. Yeah. Because the church is composed of people. Right. And when we look at the church, yeah. we see ourselves. Yeah. 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 And, and, and for that reason, yeah. we don't like to criticize the church. We don't, we don't like to look at the church real hard because we want to see the church as a perfect organization. And, and we don't want to examine the church and find that there are some defects. So we go on without looking at the church. We go on without evaluating the church. We go on without taking an appraisal of the church. Well, listen, 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 listen. The, the temple at Jerusalem. The temple, that was the temple of God. Go ahead with me. It, it was God's temple. And, and listen, it, it, it had enjoyed Unchecked freedom for sin. No, no, nobody ever bothered the temple. Nobody ever examined the temple. The temple was a holy place. The temple was a perfect place. To the temple was exempted from examination. But Jesus Christ. And, and to the point that they finally killed 
Yeah. Am I right? We, we measure our churches by the property that we have. But I want to I want to pause here tonight to tell you all that the Lord is not talking about that.
I'm preaching. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about real preaching. I'm not talking about no shucking and jiving. I'm talking about real preaching. I'm talking about serious preaching. I'm talking about responsible preaching. I'm talking about a gospel that has shaking and shifting power. Do I have a witness here? I'm talking about a gospel that purges. I'm talking about a gospel that purifies. Do I have a witness here? And I know, I know, I know it's not the kind of gospel that most people want. And I know it's not the kind that they like. But God knows it's the kind we need. That comforts the afflicted and afflicts the constant. Yes, sir. Am I right? This, this kind of preaching pastor is not entertaining in the yeah. I'm trying to preach it, y'all. It, it, it's more than an art. It's more than homiletical know-how. It's more than wrapping some words around some text. I'm talking about the eternal word. Lord. It's a word from the other side confirmed by the Holy Ghost. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of preaching, y'all, shakes the foundation of the government. Yeah. This kind of preaching shakes the foundation of our of organized religion. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to move on. I, I can talk some more about it. We got to preach. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anybody agree with me here I said we gotta pray. We, we gotta stand behind this sacred desk and proclaim the word of God. It's the word of God. It's not about me, it's all about him. This was and brother preachers, we can't be afraid to preach. Tonight, 
is that grown children of God put down the toys of children yeah. and take on the tools of adults. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should say that again. I, I don't want you to forget that I said grown children of God put down the toys of children and take on the tools of adults. And so many times we have to keep toys around because we have so many toys. Who ought to have two are yet playing with Tom. Time ought to come when you ought to grow up. Children, children of God are growing people. They grow in grace. They throw off the small things that they used to wear. They look sometimes at things that they used to wear and they are amazed they've grown so now yeah. that little attitudes yeah. evil thoughts yeah. habits yeah. are too small for them yeah. because they have grown you you ought to outgrow something yeah. 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 do I have a witness here yeah. you, you, you ought to be you, you ought to be more grown up today than you were this time of last year. You, listen, listen, we ought to grow up. Let, let, me, let me back up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he told John Men. He said, he said, he said, measure the church for its contribution. Measure the church for its involvement. Measure the church for its participation. Of what's going on in the world, what's going on in the nation now, what's going on in their community. Do I have a witness here? Imagine the church in the light of the challenges it makes and in the midst of the changes which have taken place in our culture. Am I right? And you got to understand that the major problems of our time, the major problems of our nation, Ah, uh, they are spiritual. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. The major problems of our community, y'all, it's not the economy. Yeah. Somebody yeah. ought to get with yeah. yeah. Am I right? Yeah. The major problem yeah. of America tonight is not more job. is spiritual. And the question is, does the church have a word for this hour? Yeah. What, what do you think about it, Brother Pastor? Yeah. Does the church have yeah. yes, sir. a word yes, sir. for this hour? Let me back out of here. 
in you. Huh? They hung him. Do I have a witness? Uh, on the cross uh, on Friday. Didn't they do it? Uh, they nailed his hands uh, and they nailed his feet. Uh, and he never uh, said a mountain word. Uh, didn't he do it? Uh, and the rest of him, uh, he died. Everybody know he died. The Son of God. But you know uh, the story didn't stop there. Huh? 